By the authority of the Senate, I admit to you to the degree of Doctor of Science and Lawrence Council. Congratulations. <laughs> Good morning, and congratulations to all our graduates this morning. I am deeply humbled and grateful to be recognized with this honor from this great institution, and to be associated with the great tradition of learning at the University of Oregon. I have the incredible privilege of helping to lead humanity's most exciting quest, our voyage of space exploration. For 60 years, we at NASA have been driven to answer the most fundamental and profound human questions. How did the universe originate? How did we get here? And are we alone? Incredibly, we are the first generation in human history that now have the tools, technology, and the knowledge to begin to answer these questions. Our first 60 years of space exploration missions have yielded an unbroken line of scientific discovery, developed new technologies that improve the quality of life on Earth, and serve as a beacon of inspiration to young explorers the world over. I'd like to take a minute to share with you how my own personal journey has been influenced by NASA. As Professor Hercules mentioned, I grew up in a rural village in the hills of Jamaica. During my childhood, I witnessed economic hardship, political violence, and numerous challenges that many in the developing world still face. Our typical days were spent in a one-room schoolhouse listening to the instruction of our teacher, Mrs. Iris Simpson who sat regally at the front of the room, flagged by the Jamaican flag on one side, and of course, on over the other shoulder, a daily picture of the royal family. Despite her best efforts, for most of us there was very little to be optimistic about. But that changed one event in the summer of 1969, when I was eight years old, completely transformed my life. On July 16th of that year, the massive Saturn V launched from Cape Canaveral, lifting the Apollo spacecraft and its three brave astronauts on an impossible voyage to the moon. This event captivated the world's attention, and it even interrupted our daily routine in the classroom in Jamaica. Mrs. Simpson had the presence of mind to read from us each day from the newspaper, The Daily Gleaner, the transcript of communication between the spacecraft and Mission Control Center in Houston. We were at once transported from our limited reality to a world of boundless possibilities. And as Lois has mentioned, I found, my, I found my way to be in front of a black and white television on July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong first set foot upon the moon. In that instant, I knew with absolute certainty what my life work would be. And here I stand today. I am profoundly grateful to Mrs. Simpson. We at NASA believe the next 60 years will be even more exciting and will produce an unprecedented exponential explosion of technology that will bring unbounded economic opportunity. To turn this vision into a reality, we must transform an organization that was founded on technical excellence into a collaborative, innovative culture that leverages academia, public-private partnerships, and international partnerships. This requires new business models, new organizational strategies, and a new workforce culture. Fortunately, we who are expert technologies have found thought leaders in other disciplines that have become invaluable partners in helping us to shape that future. Second to none is the partnership we have developed at the University of Warwick and Professor Loises Herculeus in particular. This partnership has proved to be of tremendous value to me personally as I work to transform our organization and extend our leadership through the 21st century. And I sincerely thank you. Finally, I wish to thank the most important inspiration in my life, in my, life my family, my daughters Rochelle and Danielle, my son Christian and wife April who are here today. Christian is the same age today that I was when I walked out of Apollo mission. I am motivated each day by the knowledge that our work together can create a legacy that will motivate his generation and generations to come. I'll close with a few humble words of advice for our graduates. If I can make it from a small village in Jamaica to become a leader in the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Anything is possible. First line for personal questions. So to our graduates, find your personal passion. Find your Apollo and pursue it relentlessly. 
In spaceflight, we have a term signal-to-noise ratio. We work very hard to filter out the immense background noise to focus on the delicate signals carrying precious information across the vastness of space. In your life, in your career, filter out the noise. Focus on the signal and let your signal be an inspiration to others. The future looks incredibly bright and it is yours to create. Ad Astra, thank you very much.